Hello YouTube, this is Rollcloud FF giving you guys another tip and computer tutorial of how to take off a old AM2 slash AM3 uh, heatsink and fan and replace it with a Corsair H50 water cooler. Now, to do this properly, you guys will need rubber knuckle. Pepper tops. Okay. And a Phillips screwdriver. Doesn't matter if it's a long neck, short neck, it's all good. Now, oh yeah, let's get down to it. First, before you unscrew anything, always release the tensioner. And slowly wiggle off the heat sink. Because you don't pull too hard, because you guys pull too hard, you have to take the process out with it. And you may or may not break a pen, or you might make, you might break a bend a pen, which you can't bend back in place without failing or breaking it off. So be very careful. That's where you always twist gently before you take the heat sink off. Now, see, you can pull it off, but I advise you not to do that. Just take your finger, wig it off. And sometimes they get stuck. If that happens, Lay the heatsink next to the motherboard. Now there's a little tab right here. Take your finger now, pull it out, and it's still coming out. There we go. That's what happened to use your old uh, heatsink and cooler from stock. Sometimes their things are so bulky that they stick to the port, port and your processor. Anyways, as yeah, this one is dusty. So we'll put it off to the side. It still works. It's just I prefer using a wall corner instead. Now, the second part. See this retention right here? We gotta remove that off here because you can't use that with this. It does not work. Now you guys are curious. Well, you can't really like, mount it. So to do that, you have to take the shooter. And undo full four screws. If you twist it by the neck of the screwdriver, it makes it go a little bit faster. Now, my screwdriver is magnetic because it makes it easier to get the screws out. You can use one not magnetic, but then you have to fight to get the sometimes. Sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. But it's fairly easy. Now, I get all four screws out. And the brackets should lift up just like this. Now, sometimes you won't have this part around it. You just have these two pieces only, which is okay. It still works all the same way. Now, yeah, carefully lift the motherboard up. I prefer always have my hand on the heat sink because sometimes they're more stable than slots. Or vice versa, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Now, touch out to the side. Now, before we go any farther, well, I forget. There's two pieces. Here's a better view. And that's A and D bracket. Now, you guys are worried about losing any pieces. You guys can also do this. Now, wait a minute. You might, you might be wondering can I just use this bracket to mount the water cooler? Well, you could, but there's only one problem. The screw heads are smaller than the nuts on the bracket, so you can't do that. It's not as easy as Intel. We can use Intel's C, uh, CPU socket. But, it's still not that hard to put on. This is a lot easier than putting on some of the um, air coolers like the Coolmaster um, I think it's a 212. I could be wrong. But yeah, the cheap uh, 15 20 hour cooler. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to put on than this. Which is kind of funny, but it's all good. Now this cooler, the Corsair H, I think it's H55 or H60. Got on the uh, top here. Well, I'm not sure whether you mark it out there. There it is. Um, yeah. Now I'll leave a link in the description below where to find this more cooler at. So you can click on it, find it. Buy you guys one, get it for yourself. It's a really good cooler. It works on Intel, 
base CPUs all the way up to, I think, um, from 1366 up to 1155, 1151, 775. I'm not sure it works on a new 2011 socket. But it probably does, you just have to get a second bracket, which is cool. It's going to be hard to find it. But, that's about it. Anyways, moving on. Next step is you actually need to do this first or do this second. It does not matter. Is I take this bracket. This one, I took off another motherboard, but it's double sided tape. So, if this, is a brand new, if this is a brand new water cooler block, just peel off the stickers. Turn your motherboard around. Lay this on top and push down a little bit and it stays in place see now we have to get rid of this old thermal paste now you guys can use the old thermal paste providing it's still somewhat liquefied so it does still work that way but me I just need to replace it and maybe one of my other videos that I do later on I'll show you guys that it's actually true you guys can actually use we use the interface for binding it still covers most of the uh, CPU. Now, just take your rubber alcohol, apply it to a paper towel, and slowly wipe away the interface. It takes very to little or no effort to do it. It's okay if you guys get any rubber alcohol on the piece we see. Just let it dry before you turn it on. Now, it looks like I got most of it off. I'm going to give it a quick wipe. Now, there's a little marker here, which is fine. That's how I got it when I paid for it. Got on eBay for, I think I paid $35 for the motherboard and the CPU. The RAM I paid, I think, 15 bucks on Craigslist. Can't beat it. So, what about? I don't know, 50 bucks, you got a whole motherboard, RAM, CPU. The only thing you need is a. Um, a mid-range video card or hard drive and in case and you're done. And a power supply of course. Can't forget the power supply. Now we also have to move the thermal paste off the water block. As I said, this came off another computer. Is this for y'all this one's a little bit better than the one I had. I think this one came off of a um, I had this working on a um, 7700K that I originally traded for a 3820K. Intel uh, combo. So, for, since I'm not using this for any other build, why well, just use it on this one? Now, same method applies. Clockwise or counterclockwise, it does not matter. It will come off eventually. And rubber knuckle won't hurt the block. So, clean it for you, but it won't hurt the block. Now, you want to get most of it you can off. If there's no residue left, it's fine. It's not going to hurt it. Now, make sure you cap your rubber alcohol, because if you spill it, it's going to be a giant mess. Now, you wonder why mine's green. Mine's just a mint flavored. And I, I like the smell. Since it, uh, I have a sensitive nose, so that helps out a lot with the with rubber alcohol. Now, step two, we have this bracket here. Now you notice there's little teeth here on the sides. That's because this here snaps into it. Now you can do it before or after, it really does not matter. But it does actually help if we do it first. Now you notice that I can take this off. This is a retention black bracket. Now to do that, you just take the CPU block. Line up the brackets like that. You take this piece here and clip it on. And bam. It doesn't move. Now, turn this up, turn this over. And I probably should have mounted a little bit better, huh? That's okay. Easy fix. Because like I said, this does clip out. So, you want to realign it. Just do it like that, and bam. Now you want to wave from that. That's cool. Like I said, you can always free spin it. To get a position you feel better at. Just like that. See? 
fail. So now, when you paste it up, it actually moves. You have to be careful with the um, loop a little bit because it may or may not want to flex too easy. Which is which is fine, it's not gonna hurt much. Just be careful not to break it. Right, now I have to just pull this back on. Now me, I'm gonna mount it like this. Mainly because that way I can run the block off the side. Now you guys are wondering why I'm not applying a thermal paste yet. I must mount make sure that all my brackets line up. There's no issue. Eh, there's no issue. Yay! Which we want no issue. It all it lines perfectly. Now we can apply the thermal paste. This thermal paste I'm using is Noctow NTH1. It's roughly about 13 bucks uh, for Micro Center. All places might range up or down a dollar or two, depending on where you get it from. I'll put a link in the description for you guys to purchase it if you guys want to use it for yourselves. It's a very, very good thermal base. I mean, I do a dot in the center and a dot on each corner. Now, each video I do things a little differently, depending on the process I'm, I'm applying it to. Now, it's a 130 watt process here. I'll do a crisscross instead. But with this one is a low APU. It's, the thing is like 95 watts. So it's not too bad. Now the bolts lined up. The good thing about this water cooler has thumb screws. So you can just tighten it like that. Now I'm doing mine side to side, mainly because it makes it a little bit easier. And yes, you can use a screwdriver if you really want to. Now you can't really over tighten these because there's a because nuts on the back will keep it from getting over tightened. They just come loose on you. Yeah, just like that. Does this run out a little bit more? Yeah. Now man, it's done. Walk on set up. Now if this is already out in your motherboard and your case, you do have to move the board but if your case doesn't have a hole in the back for your CPU cooler. Now it does. You don't have to unmount any mount the board at all. You can leave it over side, but you can put the bracket on. That's it. That's simple. And like I'm gonna pretend this is my case. There's my fan for my radiator. Now all Corsair water coolers do have dual fan capabilities where you can put one on one side and one on the other side. That's called a push pull configuration. But that's completely up to you guys. Me, I do both. Whichever in my room I have my case. Now, you have two wires. Don't forget that. One wire for the pump, one for the fan. Always make sure you connect the pump to one of the fan ports on the motherboard. Or use a Molex 3-pin connector. And that's it. And that's how you connect a CPU one block. Oops. Wrong way. To your motherboard. If it's AMD related. Now later I'll do a video on how to do one for Intel. I have a 2011 version 2 socket, or is it ver oh, version 3, sorry. And I have a 1366 motherboard. I don't have a, I don't, and I also have a 1151 I do believe, 1150 socket motherboard. So I'll pick one of those out and do another video on how to do an Intel version. But that is it for me. This is Rollcloud FF showing how to install a water cooler to an AMD motherboard. You guys have a good night. Bye.